Um, types of attenuator. Now, what we've discussed on the um, <coughs> previous page is a balanced attenuator. An attenuator is um, balanced when the input impedance and the, the ideal input impedance and output impedance are the same, both 50. Okay. It is possible to have attenuators that have different input and output impedances. So you could have one that's got an input impedance of 50 ohms, output impedance of 60, or an input of 50 and an output of 600. Okay. 50 and 600 are common impedances for test equipment like um, signal generators in here, in the lab here, and, and other types of device like that. They're quite common to have those impedances. Okay. Now, you might have to a sensor and an amplifier for that sensor where the impedances don't match. You can put an attenuator, an unbalanced attenuator between the two to match those impedances up. So if you had a 50 ohm output amplifier and a 600 ohm input um, instrument you wanted to put that into, you could put a 50 ohm input attenuator with a 600 output in between the two and match those unmatched impedances. All right? So that there are two designs. A T-type design, aptly named because it looks like a T. Okay, it has two series resistors. And I'm going to use this terminology. So two series resistors because the calculator we're going to use uses this terminology. The parallel resistor is called the shunt resistor. So a series in series out and a shunt okay this has pi type design that's called because it looks like the symbol pi yeah and this is shunt in shunt out and series I know of no reason, really, why you would want to choose one over the other. It could be due to available component values, because if you design the same attenuator in both pi and t, the component sizes will be different. You might actually get closer to a pair of preferred values if you choose one or the other. But I know of no other reason offhand why you would choose pi over t. The, the hand calculations for t are easier than those for pi, but other than that, I know of no reason. Okay? Now, if you're, you're doing unbalanced, the value of your input components, the two series resistors or the two shunt resistors on the pi type, will be different values if the attenuator is unbalanced. All right? So if you've got a 50 ohm input and a 600 ohm output, Z1 and Z3 on both types will be different values. And that, that's fairly obvious that that would be the case. Okay? Unbalanced attenuators... This is where you might, the other thing about the first one is it's where you're looking at a signal that is, is above or below a common rail. Yeah, so you've got a naught volt rail and a plus volts rail. If you've got a signal that is between plus 5 and minus 5 volts, we need to shift Half the, imp half the series impedance into the other rail. So what you do for that, and we're, we're not designing these, this is included for completeness, right? But you design a T-type 
but you'd put half of each series resistor value in, in each rail. Otherwise, the design calculations are exactly the same. Yeah? And that's where you might have a plus 5, minus 5, plus 10, minus 10 signal, something like that. Whereas uh, there is no um, solid zero or ground side to the signal. Now we're into whether the input and output impedance are the same. Symmetrical attenuators, these are the type we're going to design. Okay, They are where the input and the output impedance of the attenuator are exactly the same. Fif both 50 ohms, both 100 ohms, both 600 ohms, so on. Okay, For um, symmetrical attenuators, the two input-output components, Z1 and Z3, will be of the same value. But the shunt may well be a completely different value to that. No. These two, these, this, if, if they're symmetrical, yeah, Luke, that and that will be the exact same ohm rating. So It's part of my deliberate mistake, Luke. You're, you're familiar with them, aren't you? Yeah. Huh? All right. And again, here, these two are equal value. So I couldn't see what you were on about. So if that one would come out as 10, that would be 10. This could well be 25, for instance. Yeah? The, the, the relationship <coughs> between those two is irrelevant. But if they're symmetrical, these two will be the same. If they're asymmetrical, i.e. Uh, they're different input and output impedances, they won't be the same. Okay? We could design a, 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 an attenuator for a particular attenuation level using this or this, that all the component values from that one will be different to these ones. But again, these two will still be the same if it's symmetrical. All right? The single impedance that is the input and output impedance, let's say 50 ohms in our example, is called the characteristic impedance or ZO. Yeah? So it's got one characteristic impedance of that attenuator, it's called ZO. Used where the impedance of the source device to connect it to the input. Is the same as the impedance of the load, the device connected to the output. Right? It's said to have a ZO or characteristic impedance. Yeah. If if the if the input impedance of this is fifty ohms, Tony, the intention is you connect a source that's got 50 ohms impedance to it. Yeah? And then if this is classified as 50 ohms, the intention is ideally you'll connect a 50 ohm resistor to it. Or, or, or an output that's got 50 ohm impedance to it. Things will still happen if you don't but they won't be to what the design was in the first place. You won't get the de you'll get slightly off the designed attenuation level because of the fact that they aren't matched. Yeah. All right. Okay. We can find the characteristic impedance of a symmetrical T design um, using that formula. So if we know the values of Z1 and Z2, we can find out what the um, characteristic impedance of that is using that formula there. Z0 is equal to the root of Z1 squared plus 2 times Z2 times Z1 we get the characteristic impedance. Now, 
that's some as a calculation I would argue that we're generally going to do because what you're going to want to be doing is design an attenuator to do a particular job and give you so many um, decibels of attenuation we're coming on we'll come on to that in a minute I'll just throw that one in now give you the right decibels of attenuation or cut your voltage in half whichever way you want to look at it right and be the right input and output impedance how often are you going to want to know unless you've got a circuit diagram of attenuator there and it doesn't say what its characteristic impedance is you ain't really going to want to be using that formula so I've included it in the lesson as a bit of completeness but we ain't going to harp on it because I'm not testing that in the exam you're not going to be doing those anything to do with attenuators and filters is assignment only okay if only if the um, the input and output impedance are the same it's not about have to be if if Z in and Z out are equal we call that it's Z O because there's only one value both the same and if in and out are the same those two components values will be equal you know all that nominal values will in a real circuit you might have a, a 5 ohm resistor that's 5.2 5 right there and you might have one that's 4.8 there but the nominal values will be the same okay so they will be the same this one is highly likely to be different yeah if it's asymmetrical different input impedance to output these will definitely be different values and that will be another third different value all right yeah this will then not apply at all that calculation won't apply it doesn't have a characteristic impedance then it has a separate input and output impedance all right luke yeah for the um, symmetrical pi the formula looks just a little even bit more unwieldy and again I don't think there's any great value in us calculating half a dozen of them because it isn't something that you'd want to do but what you might want to do is an unmarked attenuator in front of you that you know is a symmetrical attenuator you might want to find out its characteristic impedance so that you can connect it to the right load if you you can do so by measuring its open circuit input impedance with a meter measuring its short circuit input impedance with a meter and then using that formula so if we had a practical attenuator here on the table we get and that's not marked but we know are symmetrical in nature we can put an ohm meter on the input, take a reading, connect the short circuit on the output, take another reading, and use that formula there, and we can find the characteristic impedance of that attenuator. Yeah. What's more likely, however, is that we need to design a particular level of attenuation and have a specific input and output impedance. We'll return to this problem shortly once we know how we define attenuation. So we'll come back to that.